okay, but it'll bring it down it'll to like a fifth like or a tenth. <laughs> so is it on like aperture priority? It or is something? on aperture oh, priority. Sorry. Yeah, I know we're <laughs> stuck on stuck on aperture priority. We'll it's really frustrating. We'll get better. Can you uh, reseat the up. DVL? Yep. Uh, might might actually. I thought it was gonna get four beams steady, but it's not. Uh, definitely uh, a priority for when we recover. You can do it anyway. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Um, I think we're gonna kind of like this is oh, gonna yeah, we're flatten to out really now. quickly. Okay. When yeah. we get up there and I get a good DVL fix, do you mind if I take five minutes and stole that suction hose? Let's do it. Get ready. Yeah, it looks to like hand we're over back in good shape. Yeah, to the other back into don't like no to give my life bag land. of snakes. <laughs> <laughs> I do like to hand off right as we get to the sandy bit, though. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'm into that. <laughs> Evil. <laughs> hey. It's the name of the game. <laughs> Sand. It's okay. They can point five knot over that and yep. uh, and <laughs> get to. They've got lots of good stuff ahead. <laughs> That's a cool, interesting rock. Oh, big, yeah. yeah. That's, is that all consolidated? It looks a tad, that's very interesting. This big angular boulder here. Yeah, yeah that one's cool. But it looks like a bunch of the consolidated smaller yeah, ones. Yeah, like cemented almost. together. It looks like both of these, like this and this, like crashed down. Yeah. Like broke yeah. Like off. Yeah. This could have been a uh, uh, underwater well, it won't be an underwater landslide, but just natural Erosional breaking of, uh, processes, yeah. of stuff. Yeah, you can kind of see these, like, fracture marks there. I always point those out as if, like, this is going live streamed, <laughs> but you can see the breaks. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why isn't our teleprompter, like, st like this thing set up to the... I, I can put it on there. Oh, uh, yeah, I think we've done that in the past. I was just curious. I didn't know if it was get another 20 or meter ship probably move. Probably not. Yep. Oh. Generally, it's probably us just being annoying and drawing. So <laughs> <laughs> nice is? overhang of corals right here. What is this one? And some yeah. on top. So if I have the Ooh. band cam, oh. they can kind of see it. Yeah, could we zoom on this little section right there quick? Sure, yep. Okay, let me get back to And then I think that's a mushroom coral. Yeah, yes. that's heteropolis down there. But that looks like a that's pink a anomaly coral. Pretty stretched looks out, like but a uh, okay. let's see what I can do here. Yeah. Go ahead and zoom in. Is that what we think it is? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking, but... I see a oh, shrimp. So we know what we're thinking. Oh, I think I know what you're thinking. I don't know though. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, uh, I think it's a. Hem it's hemicorallium, I think. Yeah. Still cool. Ooh. Or it's that weird. I mean, we had that super, like what Steve called what I would have looked at and been like, for sure, hemicorallium. Yeah. That he was like, that's the narrow, morph paragorgid. Oh, the not. Uh, that doesn't look too novelly to me, though. But the yeah. only way we would know is with is the like tap test, you know, like is it is, is it, it flexy soft? or not? I don't know. But, all right, I think we're good. Yeah, thanks. Sometimes it's uh, oh, science where you just gotta poke something and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So oh, either hemicorallium or paragorgia. Another one of those sponges. Yeah. The stock to you, Plectelid. Mm-hmm. Probably, I think they're Amphidocella. Yeah, that one looks like it has more of a lip. Yeah, but not in the hyalonema way. No. That's a big dead base. Look at that, that yeah. was huge. I like to, when I point something out, draw over the whole thing <laughs> so no one can see it. Actually, it's like this. Personally. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the people who are um, sports announcers and yeah. they're drawing on the yeah, telescreen. They're better at their jobs. <laughs> yeah. 
Is that a what stop? Is, that? is it a sponge? <laughs> like now, as we get closer, I'm not sure. It's a lump of something. Hannaford's like, I'm gonna need 20 minutes to put this slurp <laughs> No, thing no. On. Well, it looks like there's um something in the huh. ground. Just past yeah, it. Yeah, I see that too. Go this looks like zoom. a sea pen or something. They look go. super low to the ground. Okay, so, so that's a weird sponge. Yeah. Uh, maybe the other side is a little more telling. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I can tell you that it's a sponge. Looks like a glass sponge. Yeah. So here's a question. Why are some sponges stalked and others aren't? Mm. Oh, sorry. Oh, Why are the, some birds chickens and others ravens? I, I don't that a different <laughs> evolutionary <laughs> benefit to being mm -hmm. yeah. one or the other. Why are some crinoids stalked and some aren't? Like they ought to have changed. Oh, is that a black coral? Uh, yeah. Right yeah. here? Yeah, black coral, now. maybe? Kind of looks like it. You still want to see the other side of the sponge? Uh, yeah, maybe as we come around, yeah. Oh, oh that's a weird. Oh, is it's that like a, a uretid also of some kind? What, it's like an amphitheater. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is like an amphitheater. Maybe we could zoom a, a little on that and then check out whatever was up on that boulder. Oops. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, dead sponge. You're coming okay, with go ahead. mango. <laughs> Looks like a one of these. You're edited. No. You have oh. no something else. Uh, uh. Oh, um, let me look at that closer. Polyopagon? No. No, not polyopagon. No. Doesn't look like that. Maybe, st I don't know. No, it, it doesn't, I don't see the Bissell threads yeah. on it. That's hmm. that's good, we've got a picture. Yeah, we're good. Full wide. And then I think there was like a pinky coral in the back that maybe was yes. a black coral. Just above Just this. Just real quick. On that boulder. Yeah, that. Or Let's maybe it's just a Chrysogorgia that's making me. Oh, actually, that's definitely a Chrysogorgia. Uh, yeah, never mind. Okay. Okay. We're good. Just kidding, just kidding. Never mind. Thought okay. it was something else. <laughs> Desperately looking for other things. <laughs> no, I was, I was content with that. I'm not going to complain about anything that just happened for the last two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Except for the slurp. Yeah. Hmm. Silly screw. Yeah, that's pretty rough. We got to get that <laughs> sorted. Um, I'm going to take yeah, a little seat yeah. up ahead here and Do fix your this thing. Slip. Yeah, we're in probably no man's land, so. Whale bone sighting? <laughs> I mean, like, it's, it's an interesting shape. <laughs> <laughs> Still can't have anything to say. Cool. Doink. Doink. Man, yeah, my. Can't wait to take this thing off. I know, it's. Once you notice it, you notice it, yeah. and it's really yeah, like, hard. Yeah. Oh. It's like I'll find a good spot, and then I'll be like, nope, gotta, gotta fix. And the pain is on the same side as my, my, my arm shoulder uh -huh. thing, so now I just have like one <laughs> no. whole side that feels not offset. <laughs> oh. That's a thing. <laughs> Dead sponge. Um, I don't know. It looks kind of floaty. Yeah, something dead. So that's suffering from the whole, it's blurry near the edges, you know. Yeah. 
but it looks kind of cool. Definitely dead, but I don't know what that is. Or what that was, I should say. Hello. Okay. No, no, no. That's better. No. A lot of sponges. We also got an eDNA sample. All right, I've got early early relief. So, uh, nice. bye team. I'll see you down downstairs. <laughs> Thanks for all your all your help and and jokes and and everything and navigating. Okay. See you in twelve hours. Yep. See you then. <laughs> see you in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Just a shadow. I don't know. Kind of looks like it's just a shadow, though. But yeah, we are just putting the slurp back in its home, back in its holster.
That is Spidoscopelia, oh. almost looks alive actually. Yeah. This one over here. And then I know we really do need to start moving up the slope a little. Yeah. Someone in the chat said they're both euplectelid. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Those are euplectelid, so the yeah. Amphidocella is, is a euplectelid. That's the Amphidocella is the genus. You want to zoom? Yeah. Uh, Yes, on the sponge. Oh, both of those. That's or a living uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Spidoscopulia for sponge. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah. thanks. Oh, and there's a, um, I don't mind. Here, I'll write these purple. in loopy. All right, which, which specimen are we looking at here? Sponge, please. So the sponge on the left Ooh, is the... Oh, look at it. It's fluted. Phoraeid is the, is the family, and then that is... A spidoscopulia. Living, finally. We <laughs> haven't seen any living ones yet. Yeah, so that's very no, cool. No, yeah, they've all been dead. All right, that's, Falling over. that's good there. Thank you for Zoom. Okay. Well, I'm not excited this already, but is that a crinoid on that sponge? Or um, I... It didn't look close enough. Yeah. I, it looked more like the... There's the a big yellow star. crinoid star. at the bottom, though. Okay. Yeah, it did. Okay, like well we can keep moving up a little. Roger. Man, these pictures are making me sad. <laughs> and then I think that other sponge above it was a uretid sponge of some kind. But I don't know which one. Do you want a picture of it? Uh, it's all good. It's... Okay. Yeah, we got it. Oh, there's a nice crinoid hanging oh. on to the unbranched bamboo. Uh, look at that sponge. Uh, that is in toward us 10 meters. Oh, tucked in there. Another interesting. Sorry, um, I just fell into the, like my habit. You do okay, it. It's, it's your fine. job, and I'm all of a sudden I'm like <laughs> just like I used to. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> See a lot of these big rocks over here that are lobed are uh, pillow basalts that look like they cleaved off. You see all that uh, column of jointing that's uh, that is a the breaking sponge. habit of them. Oh, you mm. see all the yeah. Look at all the broken pillows there. There's just so mm -hmm. much. That's a big, big sponge. Is that a crinoid? Yeah, that's the purple crinoid on the edge of that oh. unbranched. Oh, oh wow. I've never seen that. Yeah. You go zoom. Sure. Zoom enhance. Sock crinoid. No, it's on, or a, it's on a the brant bamboo. Oh. Uh, come down a few meters, please. Oh, the coloring is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I love the ombre purple crinoids. Yeah. They're very aesthetically pleasing. Okay, go ahead and zoom. Oh, is it? Wow. No, Pretty. it's not quite that one. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, it's um, um this one. It's an an yes. That one I actually do feel confident about. I yeah. recognize that. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. That is magnificent. I'll on, write it, I'll write it and in it's in on a bamboo. And you just see Metro. how uh, its cool. tendrils are wrapped so tightly around. Yeah, yeah. at the bottom, yeah. yeah. Right. Hanging on for dear life. That's cool, thank you. It's almost like a, Move along. a grape juice stain purple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, I haven't had grape juice in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't this know if I've ever cow. had grape juice <laughs> unless it's fermented. <laughs> <laughs> that works too. That works too. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. You never had like sparkling grape juice as oh, a that kid. Is great. No. Or <laughs> grape soda. Great. It's good. It's, it's actually good. very good. Yeah. <laughs> I totally I don't even drink sparkling water. <laughs> <laughs> the I white grape the, juice. The yeah. grape was always Sarah's a like, too I brought sweet. some from Costco. It's actually on the ship right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just. I mean, whenever I want to get fancy, I'm like, give me some bubbling grape, bubbling <laughs> grape juice. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Ooh uh, big fans on the Another one. 10 meters in. <laughs> yeah. Hi, 
are you doing, Hannaford? Oh, he can't hear us. <laughs> I think his headset is bothering yeah, tight. him. Yeah, these are not comfortable. Head. So now we're starting to go is more the headset so up this compressing hill? your luscious locks, Hannaford? What? the headset compressing your luscious locks, Santa Bird. It's my ear. Yeah, it hurts my ear too. I know, you gotta switch the sides sometimes. I know, and the bit, if you, like I, I always switch it every couple hours and I yeah. just did like three and a half. Now it feels like I got hit with a bash. <laughs> 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 what were you saying, Loopy? Sorry? So are we moving more so up the slope now? Yeah, now we're okay. slowly creeping up again and putting in ship moves to stay close. Oh, just a couple, couple heteropolypus, couple mushroom corals there. Woohoo! I'm just calling stuff out. We don't have to zoom on it. My gosh. I know, it makes me really I'm sad. I'm real sad about it. Oh, yeah. I'm like you can try to mess you, I, when you do I the have things, yeah. This also if you make it too low, makes the shutter speed go really, really low oh, okay. too. Unfortunately, I need so to I learn like more about cameras. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's you change one. It's so much. They're all interlocking. Yeah, that's, but mm. yeah, maybe we look at this. Or no, actually, uh, no. Kind of looks like a dead skeleton, and then just another sponge. You want to look at it? We can do a very brief uh, zoom. Yeah, it's real quick. Zoom in, please. Kind of looks like the that no. second sponge that we saw, the uretid one, looks like a dead one of those. The at least what's on the right. Yep. Yeah. Oh, like and I, it is. Brand, is that only partially dead? Can we I zoom think it's and only see partially if that's attached? Dead, yeah. yeah. Or if that's two different sponges? I think that's I think actually attached one. with a big ophiroid and a lot to say. Yeah. That's that's actually pretty cool. It's really grasping on. I thought I was going to jump off. <laughs> Never know, it might. I think we got a good zoom That's here. Good. Thank yeah, you. Thanks. Oh, looks like it. Up. Yeah, there he goes. Uh, <laughs> maybe never mind. Where will it go? Where will it go? It's probably confused about the noise. Maybe the currents that Hercules is stirring up. Another star. Hmm. Yeah, we haven't seen too many of just the plain old crinoids. Yeah. Yeah. So are there any predators to these uh, corals, crinoids, or sponges down here? Well, the corals, we've seen lots of predation. Oh. See the sea stars sometimes chomping their way down, eating polyps as they go. Uh, for those carnivorous jellies, too, we saw that predate on some corals. Um, what were the other ones you asked about? Uh, crinoids and sponges. Uh, not much eating the crinoids. That we know of. Remember those fields of uh, crinoids without yeah. their heads? Yeah. Somebody oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Were you not I wasn't. That? that must have been. Uh, yeah, when I was. Oh no. Yeah, there were like like the sea lily Hundreds. meadows, but they were all like. I wonder if the heads just got too big and heavy or something. I mean, that wouldn't be like evolutionarily beneficial yeah, to have happen, but it maybe <laughs> if there was, <laughs> if there was a current that was stronger than Swear. usual Can that we they move the ship in 20 meters these are cool layers yeah it's beautiful and this is so different from the pillow flows that we were just mm -hmm. over oh, yeah note something about that transition it's interesting we kind of had the layers at first and then big pillow flows and then now we're back over the layered sections oh seeing I think you're headed pan left is there anything around there yeah Something there's a coming in there yeah well, 
It looks like the slope continues, so Let's see what's above. Some dead stalks. Yep. What's on the end of this dead stock here? Can we zoom on that quick? Is that a yeah? It looks uh, like an anemone. Like yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Looks like oh, a yeah. fly trap. Actinos. Go ahead and zoom. I was about to say. We always say fly trap, but I think it's Actinos ifia. I just realized, yep. I just see, I did not put the, I meant to put the and slurp holes away earlier and I didn't. Oh yeah. I don't want to hand that over, that's not very nice. Brazingid sea stars down on the bottom of the stock. Good zoom, thank you. So do fly trap and enemies at like Venus fly traps to catch their fruit? Or are we gonna hit the, no, we're not. Uh, they do still use their tentacles. They use their tentacles more to cap capture their food, to my knowledge. Whereas <laughs> the Venus flytrap plants kind of like snap closed and then use the projections to keep stuff in. Oh, that's a lovely picture, Sarah. <laughs> a little blurry, oh, but it's a close up. Cool though. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at those. Yeah. So, yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, I don't know what they're called in the Brazingids, what they call those. Yeah. What sticks out? Cirri? Cilia? I don't know. Uh, yeah, if none of those feel quite right for that, no. but I don't I don't know what the right thing would be. So, Sarah, for the camera settings, uh, mm -hmm. your, if you're adjusting the shutter, then that's going to affect your blurriness a bit because it's like how quickly. Yeah, yeah that's the thing that's that we, that's our perpetual <laughs> issue is we can't adjust the shutter because someone well, on the camera actually changed the oh. mode to so not allow us to, it's not full it's manual. It's like automatic. So that's why we want to pull it off, pull the bottle off and open it up so we can be on full that's manual. That's why it's been so sad. Uh, I yeah. mean, can you adjust your ISO and your aperture? We've you been can, trying. and it just makes, no matter what you do, the, like right now the shutter speed's kind of a <laughs> Doing great. Terrible. <laughs> you thing. can do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. <laughs> That's for one. It was all on the wrist, you see. Just got to work it out. So, for those of you who are tuning in, welcome aboard the exploration vessel Nautilus. Oh, no, no. We're here exploring the deep sea around an unnamed guillot, located outside the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. We are currently seeing here, observing and taking samples. And if you have any questions for our team, feel free to put them Ooh. in our Ask Us Questions tab Got on our it. homepage. And yeah, we'll be here to answer them live for you. And we have people tuning in from all around the world, right, including places like Germany, Canada, Finland, the United Kingdom, Hong Kong, and Brazil. So welcome aboard. Woohoo! Wow. And for many of you, it's uh, coming nighttime on that side of the world, and it's still afternoon for us. It's <laughs> yeah, so please. bright outside for us. So uh, we'll welcome you as you stay up late to check us out. All right. Yeah, I think that's just a shadow. Mm. Actually, mm, see that thing? 
don't know though. I think it's just a shadow, but see it on the still cam. Okay. Oh, yep, that's a rock. It's a rock. <laughs> it's not just a boulder. It's, it's a, a rock. rock. <laughs> I think that's like my favorite episode, the Krusty yeah. Krab Pizza episode. <laughs> <laughs> So sorry to everyone else who hasn't watched Spongebob. You're missing out. Yeah, you're getting a lot of Spongebob references. I think we're back in Simon World. Chris. You, just had, to be, you just had to have been there, you know? <laughs> Alrighty, guys. I am passing my data logger um, to Chris. See you guys later. Amber, can you just push the camera and the Zeus past that bit of the arm there? Yeah, thank you. Ooh, large fish in the still cam view. I think they're figuring something out. Oh, that's a big one. I can't see what that is, but it's all right. I think it's gone now. Oh no, it's to the right. But we are also during a watch change kind of moment, so. Oh, an urchin, or no, an enemy? An urchin. enemy, maybe? I think Looks it's like an it. enemy. Okay, I have a. I just came up with a joke. Oh no! End of the shift joke. Yes. What's the <laughs> name of the uh, bank teller at the undersea bank? Something shell. I don't know. Any money. Get it? It's like an ah, enemy, but no. any money. <laughs> Amazing. On that yeah. note, video watch change. <laughs> <laughs> and with that corny joke, I leave you guys, and we'll be changing over to our next SPL host, Katie. Y'all have fun with her. Thanks. And so this is a uh, good afternoon, good evening, and good night from all of you around the world here on the Nautilus. Something just went by. some sort of dead sponge below. So we're getting somewhere. Hello. All right, I'm leaving. Goodbye, everyone. See you in 12 hours.
video check. I could add a little bit of audio. So everyone watching at home, we're just doing a watch change, and once we get all the seats in the control van passed over, we'll get back to exploring. Go ahead. with it there's the you're right the zigs and zags were purely for making the ship happy but we've also got plenty of time and a lot of this is going to be sediment so let's find a, a interesting feature and just follow it generally uphill and if or somewhere between uphill and four waypoint four either way So the previous shift just left, and they gave us nothing but sand. They got to see all the cool rocky stuff, all the unique sponges, and we get sand. I wouldn't complain. We haven't spent a single minute in blue water yet this expedition. So that's kind of my thought. I'm like, I love me some blue water, because you get to just like sit here and chit-chat. Like, talk about all the things that you normally can't talk about, like dinosaurs, and I don't know, what else? Like, favorite ice creams. Ooh, ice cream. Yeah, it's ice cream Sunday. So I got it's ice cream day. It's ice cream. Ice was cream that was day. that Lynette? <laughs> Hi, Lynette. Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you. I am very excited for ice cream day. I'm wondering if we're gonna have. So for those online, last week we had mango, mango, and was it strawberry cheesecake or cherry cheesecake? One of one, one of, of the two. It was a red, Yeah, I think it was strawberry cheesecake. Both of them, like, really pretty good. I'm, like, I was very impressed. Yeah. So now I'm, like, what is our flavor going to be tonight? Or mm. maybe two flavors <gasps> again. Ooh, two flavors. So risky. Who knows? Who knows? So, so much decadence. <laughs> and since we had hamburger night last night, I'm guessing it's pizzas tonight. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, but normally it's... Norm I had pizza last time. What's up? They had pizza last week. Yeah, I feel like every Sunday they have hamburgers and every Saturday they have pizzas. All the days blend together. It seems so long <laughs> since we had ice cream. I know. Every day I is know. a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I am still waiting for chocolate chip cookies. I've I just keep hoping like 
Oh, good Lord. Uh, mm. I just keep hoping that we are going to be getting a whole bunch of chocolate chip cookies. Ah, oh, there we go. Bloop. All right, so uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to the 4 to 8 shift. We have just come in. I'm Katie Doyle. I'm a science communicator. And I guess if y'all guys are up for it, we'll do the same thing. Introductions. And for our question tonight, what was your favorite childhood TV show? So for me, my favorite childhood TV show was the TV show Rugrats. Like, it was so cute. Mm. Like, oh, I loved that TV show. And then as I got a little bit older, I started watching The Simpsons a lot. And now as an adult, The Simpsons is still one of my top TV shows that I love watching because it's so much social commentary and it's done in like a fun, positive way. Does that count as a kid's TV show though? I feel like The Simpsons is kind of an adult TV show. I don't know, but I watch, I will agree with you 100%. Um, I know like one or two of my parents' friends weren't too happy that I was watching The Simpsons and then coming to school the next day, but I still like, I watched it as a kid. But my number one choice is Rugrats, though. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, Corley? Uh, my favorite TV show growing up was 100% SpongeBob SquarePants. Um, it was like it came on like Still. every Ooh. night at 8.30, and every night at 8.30 I was watching it. Oh, hold on. We can't hear you. And I'm looking at your screen. You can't like you hear got, me? Yeah, no. Yeah, I can. She's really loud on the <laughs> I can't hear you at all. Because uh, you don't have SPL turned on. Turn on SPL. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. Yes, I can. I think I was like trying to turn you up because you are very soft. And I think I must have bumped it. <laughs> okay, so favorite TV show was SpongeBob, SpongeBob. SquarePants. Does. And your favorite person from SpongeBob was my leg. Yeah. Oh, my arm. I mean, there's different people from SpongeBob that. You know, I love, but I don't know. He's just a funny guy. Always there. Yeah. Oh, did you introduce, like, who you are? Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, my name is Corley Rodriguez. I am a graduate student from the University of Rhode Island's Graduate School of Oceanography. I study ferromanganese crusts. Um, hello. Oh, and your computer is back up and going tonight, unlike that poor 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. shift. I think what the issue was is that it was changing it. It was just taking 30 minutes after I pressed a button for it to change. So when it kept cycling through, it was when oh. I was like, why? It won't change to anything. And I kept pressing buttons and it was like, uh, it's going to change, but in 30 but minutes. Gonna, yes. And it's going to cycle through all of them. Oh, I hate that. I know. Like, especially when, uh, whenever you have to change your password and it's like, if you don't receive this link within 15 minutes and yeah. it comes to you like, 16 minutes later oh that's the most frustrating thing yeah or like it comes so it's like it's only good for 15 minutes uh -huh. but then they send it to you and they you don't get it right away so you're like oh let me do something else and then you forget yeah, about and it forget and then you go back it. and you're like oh no yes i've also had that one happen so many times brian what about you What's the prompt for the discussion tonight? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> and Tell what's us, your favorite take a deep dive. Thank you back to our TV conversation show. this morning. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brian Kennedy. I'm a deep sea benthic ecologist with Boston University and the Ocean Discovery League. Uh, and I am your watch lead for the next four, three and a half of the next four hours. Because it's dinner time. And we'll get dinner early, <laughs> so you'll be stuck with somebody else for 30 minutes. Um, and do we have a, another prompt tonight? Yes, favorite TV show as a kid. Oof. Uh, this is going to be really cliched, but it was probably Sequest. Ooh, what's that? Oh, you mean like the really, really old school one? Yeah, and then thanks they for making it me feel like, old. Yeah. Yeah, they turned it, it was only for on for like one season. Th okay, three seasons. And then they turned it into Sea Lab 2020. It was like an adult swim thing. Look it up. But they said that they redubbed. It was just like the original cartoon, and they just redubbed it with funny voices. And at the end of every episode, I think episode, we're talking about different things because that was the thing was the live action drama, not oh, a was cartoon. It? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. So it's called Sequest. Yep. It's this one, right? Yep. What in the world? I've never heard of this. 
Wait. <laughs> We're both looking it up. <laughs> the prompt is the Sequest, a sophisticated submarine, protects underwater colonies in an age where humankind has nearly exhausted the Earth's natural resources and turned to exploring the ocean. Okay. It's from the 90s. Whoa. <laughs> All righty. So, Chris, favorite yes. TV show and who you are. <laughs> uh, yes, I am Chris, and I am the data logger here on the Nautilus, and I, f I, I don't know, I didn't watch a lot of TV when I was a kid, but I really liked The Muppets. What is it? The Muppets. Oh, The Muppets! That was such a cute one, especially, okay, were you of the age where you got to watch Baby Muppets on Nickelodeons? It was The Muppets except as a cartoon? No, I don't think I ever watched that one. Okay. I watched the old, like... The actual puppet ones, the Jim Henson <laughs> stuff. I, I love remote. them. Uh, especially my favorite ones were the two old men, yeah. Waldorf <laughs> and I can't remember the other one that just heckled everybody. God, yeah. they made me so happy because so many times in my life I just want to do that and I'm like channeling my inner Waldorf. Oh my gosh, so everybody online is saying they cannot believe that we don't know who Sequest is. <laughs> so funny. I will say, Amber, that it is going to be a little steeper, not much, but a little bit steeper if we come up that um, that nubbin from the from the northeast. <laughs> um, but as long as you make it to the top, I think we're happy. So <laughs> I. Love it. So Sequest has a very big Nautilus throwback where Dr. Robert Ballard, who, you know, Nautilus, uh, OET, founder extraordinaire, uh, was on the end of Sequest one time. Like, so he got to make a big national debut and some serious drama and be like, here's the real science behind it. Kind of like the 1990s, like, the more you know at the end, except with Dr. Oh, Robert He was Ballard. on Sequest? Yeah, he was on Sequest. Wow. I just learned this 30 seconds ago from <laughs> the social lounge. <laughs> so thank you, Megan. Okay, so before we move on to Daryl, I have to ask Chris, who was your favorite Muppet? Oh, uh, I like I like the Animal. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. I always wanted to be crazy like him. <laughs> animal? Yeah. That was. It was one of the Muppets. Animal like played the drums and he was always wild and Oh, that's yeah. Guy. He reminds me of Flea from uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> <laughs> Just like absolute insanity. Alright, so Daryl, tossing it down to you. What is who you are and what was your favorite childhood TV show? Hello, I'm Daryl Tillock. I'm the video intern. Uh Oh, something cool in the water. Oh, hey. So is this, this a headless chicken monster? If you must use that term, yes. <laughs> I think only they can only be called that in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, really? Okay. I, I don't, I mean, I'm not, that's not a I was told thing. that that was their legitimate common name. There, sea turtles? There are people who <laughs> definitely call them that, but I generally think of it, I don't know, Dan might be able to shed some light on this. I generally have thought that was a term that was um, invented by the oil and gas ROV pilots in the Gulf that like to call them headless chicken monsters. But yes, this is a holothurian or a sea cucumber, and this is one of the varieties that spends a lot more time up in the uh, water column. So it lands, eats a bunch of sediment, and then jumps up back into the, um, the water column while it digests it. It kind of just floats around here and until it gets hungry again and then kind of lower, drops back down to the bottom for another uh, gut full of sand. Am I imagining it or can we see the actual sediment in its intestines? 100%, okay. yep. You are looking at the sediment in its intestines. And in the background there, we've got a sea pen, an umbelula. It's an octocoral, a pretty close relative to a lot of the Gorgonian, the Gorgonian corals we've been looking at. That might be your audio.
Oh, for what? For... Say, say it again. So looking up, going back to Sequest, man, there's a, there's some great photos of this. So Lynette, I want to toss it over to you. I hope you are not in the middle of a move or just about to start a move. Tell us who you are and what was your fi favorite childhood TV show? I was not ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Lynette, I'm the navigator. And my favorite childhood TV show, man, I don't know, probably Full House. Oh, that's such a good one. Yeah. That is a good one. After school every day, yeah. Full House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Boy, Dan, your guys' question a second ago. What was your favorite childhood TV show and who are you? Did you say Ren? Uh, Dan, oh. but Ren, you are up next. <laughs> Thanks, Lynette. <laughs> um, Dan, Nobody can escape this question. All right, so Ren, you're up. Who you are and favorite childhood TV show? Uh, hi, I'm Ren. I'm sitting in the Atalanta chair tonight. I think my favorite childhood TV show was definitely uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender. Great choice. Yeah, such a classic. I love that it came back out on Netflix so we could all rewatch it again. I used to try to be sick so I wouldn't have to go to like Sunday church with the family because that was when they always like played back to back Avatar episodes. So I never was able to watch the full season. Oh yeah, Daryl, what was your favorite TV show again? I was going to say Avatar The Last Airbender, but someone stole it from me. Ooh. You can say it. Yeah, you can Fine. have two of the same shows. Avatar The Last Airbender. That was pretty good. It was a good classic. Every I time. I can't hear him at all. You can't hear me at all? I can't hear you either. Yeah. Yeah, so can I. He's quite loud and on SPL on my headset. Who's uh, having an issue hearing him? Is uh, it you? I think we kind of are having issues with hearing. Because, like, you sound really quiet, Brian sounds really quiet. Like, everybody in the back row was very quiet. But everyone in the front row is fine. It's your yeah. channel to yeah. me, okay. Daryl. Say it again. According to the scale over here, it shows that my feed's going about the correct. What's that? I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Say again. According to the um, the gauge over here is showing that I'm on the correct um, sound level. I don't know why but you're... The sound level to this station is like I've got video all cranked up all the way to plus six and I can't hear you. Mm -hmm. uh, we had this issue the other night. Nope. Not who it's I'm uh, headed south now. I believe Dan's editing something at the moment. Or Dave's editing something at the moment. Or whoever's at the... Iris down just a bit for us, Daryl.
<laughs> so for those of you who been watching the last couple of days, we relocated overnight last night, ship time. Uh, we left the large guillot we spent the last three dives on and we moved about 50 nautical miles to the north sure. northeast to another unnamed um, like geo. Big rock there. Uh, we mapped it overnight and only had one piece of, um, one transit line of mapping data over it. So we spent a, a couple hours early, early this morning um, mapping it and picked this dive site. And this dive site's on a really strange feature. Um, I've never seen a seamount with this formation. I don't know, Coralie, have you ever seen this kind of valley-esque thing we've been looking at or we've been diving through this, so far this dive? I have not, Can not in any of my PC previous watches, uh, or whatever, but I was watching um, the watch whatever before, the 12-4 to 4 watch, and they were on a pretty impressive overhangy, blocky rock. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I will agree. It was really interesting to see the geology of the area, and, and I don't know anything about the geology. And the context of this is it, we, we often see these kind of, uh, roughly refer to as rift arms off these kind of features, and this one had a very pronounced rift arm off the northwest corner that then had a rift almost opening in the top of it that looked like a, I mean, this isn't the right terminology in terms of formation, but almost looked like a canyon um, running straight right down the it. center of this rift arm. And so what we've been exploring so far is we landed in kind of the flat area on and then, and then ran into this canyon feature and then came up the wall. And now we're on top of the canyon feature moving up onto this kind of secondary cone thing um, on top. And so this has been a really interesting, the biologist at least, is really interested in this geology. Um, and we've been seeing a really kind of interesting collection of corals. So here are a bunch of primnoids, which... Um, given that we're still down at the 2,200 meter range, um, has been I different than what we've seen um, on the previous dives where the primnoids have been concentrated much shallower oh, than this. Uh, and we've also seen a much higher, um, yeah, we're gonna have to hold <coughs> a the much, much higher diversity higher. of sponges so far this dive than we have uh, on previous dives. So, and across, this seems to be, this seamount so far has been a, a lot of abundance of one or two, or two species of octocorals in kind of grouping. So we just saw this little group of five or six um, um, primnoids. Earlier we saw a couple groupings of, um, of bamboos and a lot of this um, <coughs> Ramulagorgia uh, militaris all along that wall. So here's another example of a couple oh, of these big sponges sponge. we've been seeing yeah. this is a cool um, sponge. that are kind of new for this oh. expedition at least. And another sponge. And we've got a couple. <laughs> so this other sponge to the, to the left it's here, it kind of looks like its stock is a little bit dead. Is that? That's a good height there. We'll stay just the, the way uh, it looks, or is it kind of dead? Kind of high teens. Cause Some of these sponges do have multiple colors where they can get this little off beige color thing. Um, so it is hard to tell. Um, and I need a, a much closer look to tell you for sure if it's dead or not. Um, Sorry, Brian, what do you want to see closer? Uh, just this sponge is fine. And we don't need like a super close look. I was just talking about the, the multicolors. What is that red dot right there on that white section? I can't tell from this distance, but my guess is it's gonna be a shrimp. We often see a couple um, Associate? Associate, associated shrimps on these things. Um, Mary Wixton at the University of Texas A&M is uh, trying to work up the taxonomy of that group. And so we've collected a couple specimens for her uh, on this expedition Ooh. so far to help cool. better describe um, the species that are, you find in these little commensal shrimp that live on the sponges. Come up, plant.
We have a Navy veteran online chatting with us, and they served uh, Dr. Sue Sponge. on the USS Durham ECA 114 back in the late 70s. So thank you for your service. And yes, seasickness is still a real thing, and it affects everybody differently. <laughs> yeah. I'm lucky I didn't get it after the first day, but the first day I just sleep. I just, I can't do You're anything. Right. I just gotta sleep. Yeah, being horizontal helps. Mm -hmm. So this, I think is a Bolosoma sponge. Um, but whatever it is, it's quite big. <laughs> so the lasers are 10 centimeters apart. So that's a good 30 plus centimeters across at the head. Um, so over a foot in diameter. Push in there a little. Yeah, and if we there. look in the so in the front here, we'll probably see a, uh, might see a couple um, commensal organisms, potentially. This is the ET sponge. I was just thinking like, is this the it's ET sponge? Thanks. Yep. What is it called? I believe this is a Bolosoma. Bolosoma. So this was a new species discovered in 2020 or 2021, but fairly recently. Well, Bolosoma is the genus. Um, and so there's many species in that. So I don't know if this is the particular species that was nicknamed the ET sponge or not. Oh. <laughs> All right, science is happy. Thank you. It looks like it was just peering at us with its empty eye sockets. <laughs> Okay, I can do, uh, let's do 20 meter moves. Um, and I am looking uphill now, whatever my heading is. Here's our first Aritagorgia, I believe. I didn't, see, I didn't see one on the last watch, but I also didn't watch the entire four hours of the last watch from downstairs. Yeah, I didn't either. I felt like we saw a lot of sponges. Yep, a lot yeah, of sponges. a lot of unique ones. A lot of the Roma Ligorgia, a good number of bamboos. What's that? There you are. Come down a couple of meters. So the scientific name of the ET sponge is Advina Magnifica, which means magnificent alien in Latin. And it was officially classified in 2020. Another anemone right at the bottom of the screen, I think. <laughs> My scientific guess, Corley, is yes. <laughs> I missed it, sorry. <laughs> it looked kind of like that, I think. But this is kind of hard to... That's an anthemastus, I think. Oh, okay. That's why I switched me from circle. Yeah, that's right. definitely some type of anthemastus. And an anthemastus related is a, is a what? mushroom coral. Mushroom coral. Yay. And then can we look at this please? I think I don't think we've seen that yet. That Heard. looks like a black coral to me. Is the one next to it a dead coral? Potentially. It's hard to tell if it, it could be a uh, a thin permnoid that's had it all its gets got all its polyps retracted or it could be dead. I can't tell yet. Ooh, this sponge looks really interesting. You look super fleshy. Like mucusy. That's a black hole. There, there. Yep, so this is definitely a type of black coral anthropotherian. Um, 
potentially something in the paranopathies or heteropathies groups. Uh, come down a couple more meters. Copy. Getting a bounce. Pushing a little tighter there. A little more. Those total lasers are still in the picture. Perfect. That one looks so beautiful. Yeah, the polyps. The polyps. That, they look yeah. really interesting. Yeah. All right, that's probably good enough for science. Can we just pan over to the coral to the right while we're mm -hmm. zoomed in here? This guy here? Yep. So this looks... Pretty sure this is some type of bamboo coral. Doesn't look very healthy. Nope. As we've been, I feel like most of the bamboos we've seen around here... All right, we're good. Thank you. Um, have not been in great shape. And we've got a couple dead stalks here with um, comatula crinoids sitting on top of them over to the right of the screen. I love how brightly colored all the crinoids are. Like we had the bright red ones, we got the bright yellow ones, bright yellow or bright orange. Corley, the texture of this rocks, is it still considered botryoidal? Yes. Still that bumpy, bumpy, what is it? Uh, Latin for a bunch of grapes. Bunch of grapes, yes. And then we've got what appears to be another bamboo here on the top of these two corals that are coming into the center of the frame. Also missing pretty large sections of tissue on their branches. And the bigger one in the back's got a, a shrimp hanging out in it. Uh, push in there, don't. for me, please. Copy that. Hauling five. And then before we depart, can we get a quick look at the coral that's out of frame, but much of the bottom left of current shot? And this is another but different bamboo coral, I believe. This is a uh, nodal brancher. Um, and it looks like it might have a couple amphipod associates up on the top right branches, which is something I've been remarking we've seen a very few of lately uh, on this expedition in general. Zoom in there, don't. No. A little red thing, sir. Go full zoom. All right. Eh, not sure what they are, but that's okay. We don't I need to reposition or anything. I can. Yeah, I was going to say I can get closer if you want. No, it's okay. Okay, you can go away. Thank you. What's up with the Mongo arm? It's uh, stuck on stupid. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can only say that because you called it Mongo. <laughs> <laughs> the magnum arm is 
the uh, hydraulic speeds are set a little too slow. They're uh, just proportional valves controlled by a needle valve. And uh, they tend to move around a little bit. It's basically, at this depth, the viscosity is too thick to get through the needle valve. Ooh. It's a nice, pretty sponge. Yeah. Um, With its fun little crinoid associate. Yeah. Is that a quick zoom while we're here now? It looks like a lily pad shape. Yeah, kind of. All right, that's probably good for science, but I do want to look okay. at a coral on this rock before you get before you run out of time. So oh, it's up to the left. left. It's the pink. That one, please. You want to hold her up on that move? But yeah, is that another mushroom coral? It is. Um, there is one there, and I'm curious what this pink thing is. It's probably some type of paragorgia, most likely. Our tether's a little wonky. Uh, we didn't get the weight just right, so being a little more conservative. Just yeah, sounds good. So we'll try and keep it stretched out a little more. Not a very good DSC angle. Go ahead, Daryl, zoom in, please. Yep, that is most likely a Paragorgia. Kind of classic pink in color with um, a single Astroschema um, Pearl Star. I think this is the first one of this dive. And then we've got um, what I believe is a bamboo just out of frame on the left as well. Yep, so this is another nodal brancher. This looks like the same thing we just looked at a second ago um, with a couple uh, anemone associates on it. It also looks like it's being overgrown by some zoanthids. All right, we're good here. Thank you. Go wide just a little bit for me. Wow. Okay. Totally convinced, but that was the handover, so until we get a good view for it. Uh, if the if I'm down here, the current seems well. You can see which way the wind's blowing, right? So as, lo as long as it's blowing out behind us or off to the side, we're alright to get close. But if we're in line with the current, we want to stay stretched out there, so don't get tangled up. I'll try and get down where it's currents managing it for us. On a strong, on a light, medium, or high current scale, what are we at today? Uh, it seems to be pretty good here. On the, so on the lighter side, or pretty good uh, as I would pretty say strong? It's at least medium. Okay. That one coral we were looking at was strumming. I'm not sure yep. if that was me or the. Uh, but as we came up over the ridge there, it seemed to uh, we don't have it like in this particular spot. It's kind of strange. It well, was taking our current uh, tether and laying it down. Okay. Well, we came up over the top there, and it it's like it disappeared. That doesn't terribly surprise me. Having looking at the bathy, I was expecting the channel. I was actually. It looked like there was less current in that channel we were in than I would have expected for how kind of confined it was on a relative sense. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where we are in the scheme of things there. We are up out of like the, the canyon, for lack of a better word, 
and moving up the uh, we're moving up to the top of the right. yeah another one of these bottle brush chrysogorgias moving we're flying over So for those at home, this area that we are exploring is an area that is under, uh, has a proposal to be turned into a marine national sanctuary. You still have a couple of days until June 2nd if you would like to let your voice be heard. So the areas that we are exploring right now are some of the most pristine marine ecosystems on the earth and possibly going to become a marine national sanctuary. So as we're exploring, we're trying to gain a baseline. Ooh. That's a fun little cut schism. I don't sure. really have an uphill direction at the moment, Lynn, cool. uh, Lynette, so dealer's choice on which way we go. So what we're doing is, uh, as we're going out here, we're trying to increase our baseline sure. knowledge of this area of the Pacific remote islands yep. region, which is really, really kind of a, unexplored. And so we're out here just adding more knowledge, finding out more about what's down here. And again, y'all guys are welcome. If you go to nautiluslive.org, scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll see a blog all about the proposal to turn this into a marine national monument. So you can gain more information about what uh, what the proposal is, how to make your voice heard, and how to get involved in in this process. Nice yellow um, feather star here. It's a type of echinoderm. It's climbed up on top of this dead stalk. Try and get its um, arms out into the current more to increase its feeding efficiency. What's the difference between a feather star, basket star, and a crinoid? I mean, they're all part of the echinoderm families. Yep, so basket stars, basket stars are technically brittle stars. Um, so they're ophidia and they have multiple bifurcating arms. So they have a, a big central disc with like literally hundreds of arms. And so they live in the brittle star category. Then on like in the same level of kind of taxonomic hierarchy, you have the crinoids, um, which come in two flavors, the stalked and the unstalked. So the comatulate crinoids are the unstalked. And then I honestly forget what the, the Latin for the, all the stalked crinoids is. Um, and then you have a kind of a co-equal branch of is the sea stars, and then you have the holothurians uh, as well, all, all being, I think, classes, but I should go look that up. Uh, here's another one of the black corals we looked at a few minutes ago. So for those online, if you don't want to learn more about the proposal uh if you go down to the bottom of nautilus yeah. live you can see two really cool video highlights both of which were seen on our watches on previous dives because we definitely have the best watch mm -hmm. so one of them was a see-through uh purple sea cucumber and the other one my i don't know if it's my favorite but a really cool thing was a bolotnid bolotnid octopus where it just looks like a big old water balloon and thanks to those online listening for helping us ID this special type of octopus
And we actually have a new highlight uh, that was just dropped in Nautilus Live about the three meter tall Arid Ar Aridgorgia. Aridgorgia. Arid yeah. Aridgorgia. Mm -hmm. Man, Aridgorgia spiral coral. So you're welcome to take a look at that. That's under the gallery tab. That was also something we saw. On that our was watch. also something we saw. <laughs> All the highlights for this from this expedition are definitely happening on our watch, including the whalebone fossil, which has now been publicly made. So I can say that. Yes, but if you were watching, you saw us. Find you saw it. it live. You saw us collect a jawbone of, or possible jawbone of a beaked whale, fully fossilized. All right. Push in there, Daryl. Laser zoom. So this is probably a type of an enemy. All right, thank you. Okay. Keep it away. So a question for Dana Wren. Uh, Hercules has gone under some major renovations uh, since in the 20 years since Hercules was first created. Are there anything left from the original ROV, from the original Hercules, any parts? Yeah, most of the ROV is original. All the, most of the electronics are original, original valve packs, original thrusters. The magnum arm on the port side is original. Uh, we just replaced the, uh, the gyro, our octans unit. It was uh, circa 2006, I believe. Uh, yeah, the core vehicle is uh, still there. Do any of the parts have like an expiration date? Like after five years, please replace. Yeah, most of them. <laughs> 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 no, uh, the. Um, a lot of the uh, scientific sensors have been replaced, so they get taken off every year and sent back to the manufacturer, and they're recalibrated and re um, you know, serviced and certified. For example, the CTD and the optode sensor, the depth sensor. Uh, we have probably half a dozen depth sensors on the system, the different vehicles. So uh, the sonars have been replaced, uh, all three of them that are on the vehicle on the vehicles. So it seems like Hercules is always in a constant upgrade kind of motion. A lot of the components get uh, rebuilt every year, like the suction pump, the uh, thrusters. I can't believe you recognize that. I mean, I can see it in uh, here, the but there, I can't see it at all. But all gets uh, all good stuff. That, winter yeah. maintenance, new seals and O-rings and potentiometers, sensors, stuff like that. Replacing a lot of the small stuff, so you don't have to replace the major stuff. Yeah, the major stuff consists mostly of the you know the machined parts, and then a lot of the uh, electronics in the main bottle are. That's all I need. Thanks. Sorry, had auto heading stuck on there. Okay, Daryl, can go away, please. So going along so that's that. That's a C pen, Chris. That was a C pen. Okay. C pen. Thanks. What? You said that was a C pen. Mm -hmm. So along that same line, Dan, is it ever uh, scary, or does it ever concern you because you're dealing with such high voltage metals and ocean water all in one? One big package. Um, I don't know if scared is the word. Cautious. We're very cautious and uh, 
generally conservative. Uh, for example, last night we were playing with, uh, we were well into the high voltage. And we were doing that in less than I can, ideal conditions. The boat's zooming around at 12 knots, turning left and right uh, on mapping lines. And now we have J-boxes open and oil, so the decompensated volumes have to be drained and opened. And uh, we have procedures to uh, lock out the high voltage and uh, have it grounded and um, We tested all the cables and uh, the tether and the 6 8 umbilical, for example, are high pot tested before we energize them again to make sure the integrity is okay. And we're pretty, uh, we have a significant checklist that we go through before we energize any, any high voltage circuits. So it you have to be, uh, yeah, just methodical and take your time. And hey, Nav, can you give us a range to um, waypoint four and five? That was a great answer. Thank you, Dan. So, Ren, you've been learning how to drive the ROV and doing everything ROV for the past, oh gosh, I think we're on day 12. What are some of your big takeaways so far at this point in the journey? And what's direct, direct to five from here is also a, a thousand roughly, I assume? Yeah, right at, okay. Thank you. Is that where we're going? <laughs> let, me, uh, let me give Nav a, a little bit of time to figure something out real quick. 100%. Oh, and they're having the, they're having the science huddle. Uh, it was specifically for Ren, but I will always talk to you, Lynette. Please. Oh no, 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 Sorry, Lynette. Lynette. <laughs> It's the scientists during the science huddle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was gotten, trying to dodge it. Back gotten here. pretty good at. <laughs> I wasn't trying. <laughs> Don't listen to Dan. No, 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 no. No, I've been gotten, I've gotten good at multitasking, keeping track of all the uh, important statistics that are used to keep the ROVs healthy. And so, off the rocks. And off the rocks. <laughs> So has there been like one really big challenge that you've had to wrestle with? Uh, Besides me. <laughs> Can we take a, a tight zoom on this one? We haven't documented this one yet cool. since we got up on top. Primnoid? Yep, this oh is a Primnoid. Go Corley. I'm just going to uh, try and land Ooh, the DSC here so I'll be patient. One more. What is that? It happens to be on a rock. We can park Stars. the DSC on it. Do the br brittle stars? Do yep. the brittle okay. stars, can, can they swim away down. like crinoids can? Um, swim, no. Uh. Jump and flail about a little bit, yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> can, uh, go full zoom there for a minute. Uh. Yep, so this is definitely a primnoid. Um, well, and wow. I. this is where I generally get stuck always between is this um, Calyptrophora or uh, Norella, and I've given up taking a strong stance between the two genuses because they always get told I'm wrong um, by the experts in the taxa. Um, but you will see here, interestingly, that the sea star, uh, the, the brittle stars, excuse me, that we're looking at here are um, got spiky arms as opposed to. Um, the smooth arms we've been seeing mostly. So this is a, that, that's another one of the major distinctions in the brittle stars um, between 
Oh, um, the spiky armed ones are the smooth star as smooth armed astro schemas. So all of these are spiky armed. Yep. So these are all, all ophicanthidates. Oh yeah. No, I'm just double checking. I'm obsessed with the still cam. <laughs> Absolutely obsessed. But what was this top thing? The crinoid. Yeah. Okay. So we already swam off or fell off. There no, this is. is in the back. See the little end of the polyps come into view. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, now I see it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It is in the back. I thought it was attached to the top. No. Ooh, still can. All right, science is happy. Thanks. Roger. Okay. Wait. Right. Thanks. really tempting to move that DSC camera to the yeah, center. Yeah, so you can see porch. it in the back there. Mm. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. I actually forgot to communicate that. Five, please. There is a uh, little, little feature here about 10 meters away. Maybe. I don't know if it's significant. I should have the leash to reach it. Maybe I'm dreaming. Still want Delta in the high teens? Uh, yeah. The current's favorable now. It's kind of as long as the tether's off to the side of you there. And then it's not bouncing on you. Uh, that's, I think that's what I saw. So, Brian, we have somebody in the chat who's wanting to know if the spiky-armed uh, brittle stars can actually do damage to the corals that they reside on. We don't really know. So, the current assumption is that they are more or less right commensal or mutualistic in their relationship, right. meaning that they either don't do really s any significant harm or they um, are beneficial. So you will see in some places, some times, where there aren't polyps around where the brittle stars are. Um, so it is possible they're re delaying Come or preventing some second. growth Copy. or could even be damaging the individual polyps enough. But they also appear to play some cleaning role um, as well. So work in the Gulf of Mexico after the Deepwater Horizon oil spill showed that um, corals that had brittle stars survived better and they believe the brittle stars probably helped clean the oil and dispersant off of the uh, corals. Um, so the exact kind of classification there we're still unsure and it probably depends on the actual coral and the actual brittle star um, species but for the most part we think it's um, not overly detrimental, if not beneficial, for the corals to have uh, a brittle star living on them. Awesome. Thank you so much. So it looks like some type of Chrysogorgia here and uh, another Paragorgid. Uh, zoom in there real quick there. Let's see if I can come down a bit. Bad angle. Yep, this is that kind of 2D but flat, planar shaped Chrysogorgia we've been seeing a lot, and that's uh, definitely a uh, bamboo there. Okay, go away. Or bamboo, I'm sorry, a bubble gum. Did you work with uh, Chuck Fisher, Brian? Uh, I have never worked directly with him. I sailed with one of his grad students once doing some deep water horizon um, assessment work. Uh. But I certainly know who he is, and I've met him a few times. He retired and lives right down the road from me now. Oh, very nice. Yet to make it to his place yet. That's Western Pennsylvania, right? What's that? Western Pennsylvania? That uh, no, he moved to, uh, he's just out of Newport there. Okay. Got a spot on the river there with all his uh, horses and cows. And uh, his wife is a veterinarian, so there. Yeah. It's it's amusing. Chris Kelly actually, when he retired, moved right down the road from my dad. <laughs> oh yeah. So every time I go to my dad now, I see Chris Kelly. Funny.
come up five. Already doing it. All right, yeah. What's the um, top point of the feature we're going to? Depth-wise? Yes. Give me a second. Hey, it's a tripod. Uh, do a laser zoom there for us, Daryl. See if we can get him on. Uh, zoom out, zoom out. Crazy there. Ooh. Oh, nice little tripod Ooh. fish. Cute. Oh, wow. See if I can get him on the DSC here. Uh, summit is 1850. Okay. Where is he? Oh, he's this way. Sorry. Trying to get him on the digital still cam. So these belong to the family Anapidae. They're ambush predators who just kind of squat on the seafloor, um, standing on their heavily modified uh, pectoral fins and the bottom lobe of their caudal fin with these um, really heavily modified additional fins that kind of er, er, um, emanate just from um, behind its gills. And it waits for something to basically tickle those big um, antenna or the fins that function like an antenna, and then it um, opens its mouth and lunges. And as you can see from the little departure he just made, they're terrible swimmers. <laughs> we also have a question from chat. Um, so how does sound travel at these deep levels? Do any of these species oh. we're looking at have auditory Scared sensors? It. Okay. Yes, so I would assume almost all of these. Actually, can we look at the coral that we were before we leave this spot, that's uh, the which one? It's uh, camera. No, you're fine. You stay where you are. It's just down, pan down. It's right in your toe. Right. Here. Um. So yeah, creatures in the deep sea are very sensitive to um, pressure and uh. and sound. So if you think about sound, sound is a pressure wave that moves through water, um, okay. and so it it's there. analogous to a lot of different types of. Ah, this is a sea pen we haven't seen yet here. Um, I don't think we've seen this type of sea pen yet this expedition. Um, You're going to go eat, right? Actually, I think I'd like to collect Sarah's this, please. Polite, politely hovering there. She probably hasn't eaten yet. And Dan, I'd like to collect this. Right here. Um, so back to the sound question. So yeah, do you Can get I you? They're it? very. S um, if it'll get past the bolt in the slurp tube, mm -hmm. or you can just cut half of it and stick it in a box. Either way, yeah. there is probably there is probably piece of a Chrysogorgia still jammed in the um, slurp, slurp tube. Yeah. Really? Yeah, they tried to slurp a branchy thing and it got hung, hung on the um, bolt. The anti-rock bolt? Is that what its purpose is right now? Because it feels like the anti-coral coral bolt. <laughs> so, it's a quick bolt there for uh, Robert. He likes his handle. Sarah, you want to uh, see what jar we're on there? Yeah, you can see the, the Chrysogorgia branch hanging out right in there, too. Yeah. Go uh, 
Zoom in there, Darrell. Go 100% on that thing. Are you uh, 100%? Uh, zoom out just a little bit. Good. 100% on the slurp there. Fascinating. You get a good look at here at how far into the sediment it, right. um, its uh, anchoring system goes. Wow. <laughs> I can just keep it on 100% for a while. Do so we have a... Uh, yeah. Do we have a... Uh, Sample uh, box open in the front. Yes. The so go wide, go wide, Daryl. You could probably put it in either one. It'll be easy to tell it apart from. Yeah, we'll start. Yeah. In there. There's theoretically a Chrysogorgia in the. Uh, right Can you go wide, please, and put the screen back there? Whatever it was, whatever you're doing there. Oh, you're killing me. You want to put the uh, H21 uh, PC4 back up there, please? Thank you. Can you go wide on the Zeus, please? Thank you. Okay, Sarah, we'll leave the suction on and uh, open the box, the front box there. So, uh, starboard's open. Right there. Uh, suction off, suction off, oh, or no. not. Okay, oh. never mind. I made it through. Up the tube it went. I think. <laughs> okay, you can close the box. Oh, it's oh, in there. Oh, I made it. It's in there. Nice. And you can uh, stop the suction when you're going to chance and... Uh, Move that jar to uh, flush. So, what's our goal for this dive? Any sampling goals we're looking? This is um, broadly to characterize the area. So we don't have a specific thing other than to, our uh, specific goal, um, other than to collect um, the, okay, the right, dominant right. species right. we're right. seeing to make sure we get a good ID on them. Uh, and then if we see new and unusual things for this region, like that sea pen is one I have not seen around here. Oh. Um, so I wanted to make sure we get a really reports. good uh, museum grade identification of it because it's, it's certainly new for this expedition and I don't remember seeing it in the records previously for this area and uh so so far on this um dive what's the dominant species that can uh put the real had a, back a, up there and a reasonable we've seen different species i would say a different okay, genuses i know genera, i keep you busy um, i'm high maintenance this um <laughs> dive than we have the last couple even though we're I in a somewhat similar depth range we're a little bit shallower than we have been um but we oh I'm it's been interesting we haven't ha seen a, a huge diversity but oh. Uh, we've definitely seen a little bit you of a different assemblage uh, here than we the, have uh, on the previous dives. PC3 and H11, please. Uh, H11. Thank you. <laughs> PC3. It does. Uh, you probably had uh, H21 selected as your destination. Maybe we can get this guy on the DSC this time. If I, don't, if I land too hard, they feel it and they run away.
get him. Oh, swim the other way. Don't go that way. <laughs> That's the right way. Look at that graceful swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it's struggling. A little stiff. <laughs> yeah. And next time cute. someone <laughs> and next time someone says you'll take a fit you'll take to it like a fish to water, just remember this guy. I, I feel oh, like no. that's my style of swimming right there. What are we He's gotta rest after all that exercise. Right? Yeah. Yep. Fish after my own heart. You can do a quick zoom on him there while we're... You got it. Lupe, what was that sample number? Go ahead and push right uh, in. 78. Okay, so the seat pen was 78. Thank you. Yes. Great shot of its um, good, thanks. fins that are modified to be more like uh, antennae. What are we thinking this is? Uh, just while we're just for fun, try a tight zoom there. I think I'm pretty close to done. Oh, no, I got a little more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was probably a normal like a year's worth of work for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can go ahead. A beautiful indigo color on his. his nice skin. slow zoom out. Beautiful. Um, one five five is sure. Uh, I need another little cephalopod. Oh, okay. Where is the cephalopod? It was just went off to the top right. There's a pink little one. Uh, let's see, where'd you go, friend? What are you looking for? Squid-like thing. Sorry, say again? There's a squid-like thing that I saw, but I don't I do not see, see it. it now. Uh, maybe it's top uh, leftish. Top leftish. Lasers are getting close no. to what I think it is. No, I lied. Not there. Can you hear them? I still don't see the. Uh... Yeah, it, it is a moment past. I flew over it. I think it it flew away. Oh, uh, where is it? It's gone. So when you're looking at these different um, species of corals, how do you uh, classify them? Um, so there's some big patterns, like number of tentacles, um, whether they have a hard skeleton or not. Um, so for the like, you know, family level stuff, those kind of things are really good to look at. You know, if it has eight tentacles, it's an octocoral. If it has six, it's a hexacoral. If it has a hard skeleton, it's a sclerotinian. Um, and then each family or um, genus yeah. nested under those groups you bring your head to the right? have the kind of degrees. unique um, criteria that kind of define their what they are. You know, Chrysogorgids or Chrysogorgiidae are on, called uh, gold five corals five, because right? they have a gold colored yeah, skeleton and generally on have some kind of spin or rotational whirl structure to its main axis. Uh, not all of them, but they have very dainty little polyps. Bamboos or, or cryo-isidae 
um, have proteinaceous joints in their skeletons um, that look black, and so they look like the growth joints in a bamboo coral, or a bamboo, which is where they get their name. Um, so each of them kind of has different different things that they look uh, at, that I look at to kind of tell them apart. But I have to admit, that's not my strength. Um, they, they, I am the taxonomist of the world, which, bless their heart, I love, the, I need their, to do their work and do it well. Um, but that is not what makes me happy of studying the individual um, morphology, shape, and stuff of the corals to define and figure out their relationships. Um, the taxonomy is also really interesting um, because it's going through a major shift where taxonomy has always been defined previously on by um, by um, morphology, the shape of things, and things mm -hmm. that were shaped more similarly were grouped more closely to each other. And with the new explosion in our ability to look at genetics and things, relationships based on uh, DNA and RNA codes, it's really redefining how we think of species in exactly. some ways and how we classify these things that a lot of organisms are now being reclassified and, and moved around quite a bit, um, which you'll hear me quite frequently probably misidentifying things based on the lowest, the newest um, taxonomic things because I learned a different taxonomy that's now being updated. So it's a oh. continuous process of relearning and keeping up to date on the latest and greatest. Was that a... Um, uh, push in on the sea pen there what if do you, you want. What do you call it? A yeah. sea cucumber at the bottom? Yeah, it looked like the hollow I missed it, but very possibly. So this is that same sea pen we just collected a few minutes ago, um, which is certainly new to us this expedition. Um, and I'm having trouble identifying it from the records I have quick access on the boat. Um, but that, that's all we need to ID it since I'm sure that's what we collected. Okay, go ahead, thanks. How far, how far away are shallow water yep. corals to deep water corals? Far away in terms of taxonomy? Yeah. Not that far. Um, really? So the... Oh, wow. What, yeah, they're, they're not that far related. I mean, the Gorgonians, so most of what we're seeing down here in the octocorals are actually Gorgonians. And so if you are diving uh, in the shallow water, most of your big sea fans, the... Um, um, drawn a blank on what they call the what the shallow water common name is for, but the big soft corals you see that waving in the surf in the swell um, in the shallow are all gorgonians you for the most know, part. Um, okay. And taxonomically, that they're not all that on different. The DBL or I think is, that's where I am. I can't tell. So the big reef building uh, sclerotinians that you kind of expect to see, um, there aren't many of those down here, right. but. They are, but the soft corals you see in the reef are oh, dominant you know down here. Is. This tether, sorry, Brian. This tether's longer. That's what it because is. Because I feel like uh, most shallow water coral people define corals as animal, plant, uh, and rock. And I feel like deep water corals people kind of just define them as animal. Yeah, Maybe that, that's totally true because the when you think about reef building corals um, in shallows, they almost in tropics they all have a uh, a photosymbiont or um, a little algae that lives inside of them. They have a symbiotic relationship with that they provide the house um, and then in. the um, algae provides the coral with food. Good, and so when they bleach, um, that's when they are, they expel their photosymbiont. All right, this is a colophagous sponge, and that's probably good for us to get a, a better ID later. Thank you. Right. Um, and in the deep sea, because there's no light, you don't have the uh, a photosymbiont. And so the kind of plant, animal, and mineral definition of 
shallow water corals also really only applies to the sclerotinians that build reef. Yeah. Um, the couple sclerotinians we have down here, um, this deep really just get cup corals. Uh, a little bit shallower here, we pick up Enolopsamias and Madreporas um, that are that can build um, rubble reefs, but it's not cemented the same way the shallow corals do. Um, but we are just beginning to understand the microbial communities that are critical for coral life. And so that's another way of thinking about it is too, is in shallow water, you've got the, the algae, the animal, and the skeleton it lays down. But the, a lot of the research now is pointing out that the microbial, the microbiome that live in corals and with corals are very important as well. So there might be kind of a fourth part of that group. Very cool. Can you pop it off real quick? Hey, man, reach over there under the Argus thing and zoom out for me, will you? It's the left one, uh, other one. Yeah, thank you. So for anybody who has not gotten their dinner break yet, the ice cream flavors are vanilla bean and Kona coffee, which is on point. Very excited. Sorry, sorry, Loopy. <laughs> you gave me that sad look. No, vanilla bean sounds really good.